I was, I was secretly hoping that would keep the, the couch over there and I could use that, but oh well. So the plugin directory. When we started working on um, a new version of the plugin directory on this project that I'm about to um, talk to you about, it was six years earlier, almost to the day, um, that I made my very first commit uh, to a version controlled repository, um, and that was the plugin directory at the time. Um, I followed the documentation that came with the directory that was on the directory as it is still today, uh, even to the detail of using that commit message you know, that they have in that documentation um, for my first commit. Um, and it looked probably something like this. I was thrilled. Um, when I did my first commit, um, the plugin directory looked a bit different than it does now. And I want to show you a little bit um, about how it looked and uh, where we came from. So the first version of the plugin directory um, was released in March 2007, almost 10 years ago. Um, and WordPress had, at this time, has had a development hosting on wp-plugins.org uh, for you know, quite some time, but it didn't have a user interface at all. So users were not able to browse plugins and conveniently you know, um, find more information about plugins and find you know, a, a plugin that would address their, their need um, in the way that it was possible with this new plugin directory. Um, it was built on BBPress, which made sense at the time because WordPress did not ha have a custom post type like it does today. Um, and so, um, yeah, it was decided to use BBPress, uh, which is still run on today. Uh, the current version of the plugin directory still uses the same um, uh, BBPress installation. Um, Mike Adams, uh, Mark Jaquith, and MT were the ones who uh, worked on this project. Um, this is a, a screenshot of the, the single plugin view, which um, looks almost nothing like it does today. Um, it, the plugin directory over time has undergone um, quite a few iterations on design updates. Um, one of these design updates was done around 2009, where um, WordPress 2.7 was released and introduced also a new WP admin design. And so WordPress.org's uh, design, including the one for the plugin directory, was informed by that. You have the dark header um, and the light blue sub-navigation here. When we look at the single plugin page again, here it's um, Akismet as an example, it looks much more familiar already. You know, um, We have this big download button to the top right that we still have today, and um, we have tabs to split up information and you know, make it easier to, to navigate. Uh, and of course, um, on the right-hand side, we have more meta information about the plugin. Um, and this structure basically lived on uh, until today. In 2011, there was yet another design update. We have the gray header, um, and also um, plugin banners we introduced. And for the first time, plugin authors had a, had a way to uh, individualize their plugin uh, detail pages a little bit more than um, just with you know, text out of their readme files. Um, it was a huge success. A lot of um, plugins adopted that right out of the bar, right up from the start, as I want to say. Um, and it's still used today, of course, and will probably, will definitely be used, sorry, um, in the future as well. Last year, in April, uh, the plugin directory saw its uh, latest round of updates, introducing uh, the, the card view that was, um, was added to WP Admin in WordPress core. And to make that more recognizable on the plugin directory side as well, um, this was uh, taken over from there. Um, it was just released a couple of months after we finished our work on the new themes directory, which, again, was inspired by the way that WordPress core does uh, the theme uh, management screen. The, the technology, as I said earlier, um, throughout this time for the plugin directory um, remained the same. And um, so this was one of the things that um, made it really, yeah, made, that didn't make it easy to get started working on WordPress.org uh, projects for me personally, because I never really worked with BBPress before. Um, the theme directory was the first project for myself to work on um, on the uh, WordPress.org infrastructure. And as a developer, when you you know first you know dive into a new code base and and try to understand and, and learn how things work, you don't ever want to encounter a comment like this. Um, this this preceded. Uh, the code that managed um, theme downloads for the theme directory, um, the old theme directory. And so it kind of gives you an idea of um, the challenges we, we faced um, doing that shift.
the directory that we're currently working on um, that we hope we'll be able to release um, in 2016 fully. Um, I want to talk about that and give you um, more of a broad idea of what we try to achieve with it and where we're going uh, in the future. Some of our goal goals that we um, discussed when we first started working on it uh, in February was, of course, um, open sourcing the directory and the plugins API. Um, this is an integral step to make sure that um, more folks can get involved in contributing to the plugin directory and also stay in sync with the philosophy of the rest of WordPress um, and, yeah, continue to, to foster uh, the open source idea as well. Um, our, second, our second goal was to use WordPress, which is, um, I know, uh, groundbreaking, but <laughs> it's, it's something you know, we, we thought we should do. It also, um, it also helps uh, people to, to um, contribute to the WordPress um, directory uh, code or anything on meta, um, because um, you know, a lot more contributors are familiar with WordPress than they are with BBPress, um, and so writing uh, the new plugin directory from scratch using WordPress allows us to open source it and have more people involved in, in that process. Those first two um, goals um, are kind of achieved or will be achieved just by working on the directory. It's not really something that we had to work hard on. It's just um, something that, that came with working on the project. The first thing that we did have and continue to, um, to work hard on will be enhancing user experience, which is an integral part of the new um, plugin directory. Uh, the directory has grown significantly since its inception in 2007. Um, we have now almost 45,000 plugins, um, and everyone here who has ever tried to find you know, um, an SAO plugin and find the right SAO plugin for themselves knows that it's, you know, it can be daunting to weed through, um, I don't know how many hundred SEO plugins we have currently in the repository. So making that experience better, making it easier for, um, for users to find the specific plugin that they're looking for um, is our number one priority with this, with this um, project. Um, this goes hand in hand with improved search. Search is um, one of the most used, uh, most used actions on uh, the plugin directory. And so improving that um, will help us and go a long way in improving the overall uh, user experience as well. Um, and last but not least, um, achieve a scalable review process. Currently, um, plugins are being reviewed almost like uh, themes in the theme directory, um, with a big difference that the plugin review team is a set of, I think, five uh, people who, who have access to that. And the majority of, of reviews are done by just a couple of reviewer, reviewers. So making it easier um, and s more scalable um, will help um, yeah, keeping, keeping that queue short, as we just talked about with the uh, themes in the uh, Q&A uh, in the previous session. And make sure that um, these queues that we see over there um, will not appear and you know, will not be likely in the new plugin directory. If you're interested in, in kind of you know, getting an idea of, of how it looks like under, under the hood, this is a, you know, a good diagram for that. We have a, a regular WordPress theme as the basis, um, and then a, a plugin that together with WordPress itself, of course, powers uh, that site. Um, the plugin uploader and the plugins API are technically part of that plugin, but I separated them out because they're you know, so important to, um, yeah, to the directory. First of all, uh, the plugin uploader is something that we will, or we'd like to try in this iteration, uh, much like um, we have had an uploader with themes for quite some time. Um, we thought that adding an uploader to the plugins directory could help with um, automated code tests for plugins, so that plugins who don't satisfy basic requirements don't even make it to the review queue in the first place, um, but rather give you know, straight feedback to the plugin author and give them an opportunity um, to fix you know, basic errors and, and re-upload those plugins for, for a proper review. And then, of course, the plugins API, which is based on uh, the, the WordPress REST API, um, and it also has a compatibility layer uh, to work with the plugins API that you know, your WordPress installation uses to ask for updates to current plugins or to plugins that you have on your sites. As I said, um, plugin consumers are um, on the forefront of, of this transition um, for us. You know, when we started um, 
you know, working on it and, and uh, trying to, to gather requirements. Um, this is one option that we think, um, uh, or one design that the plugin directory could have. Um, boasting a, a centralized uh, search slot, um, which is you know, more prominent um, than it was now because uh, we, we're confident that we will be able to pr uh, provide better results. And so um, making that search bar more prominent um, yeah, will lead to a better user experience long term. Um, search is a better way to find what you're looking for than exploration. And so uh, this is why we think having a central search bar um, would be something that users would appreciate. On the home page, we also have different kinds of um, sections you know, for, that we could change any point, at any point in time. Um, having beta plugins, for example, and featuring those and getting more users involved in um, testing our you know, feature plugins or feature projects um, would be a good idea. We could also experiment with various data sources um, and, and have you know, feature plugins or the most popular ones, which is in the current version of the iteration. Um, on the homepage. As you can see, it's also, um, design-wise, there's a lot more white space than there used to be. Um, font sizes are bigger. Uh, this was also um, one of our, uh, yeah, some, some of the feedback that we got from, from users um, is that the current font size is fairly small, and um, so we try to accommodate that and, and increase that in the new, in the new iteration. For search, um, we're now using uh, Elasticsearch servers. Um, it was part of the diagram that I just showed. Um, Elasticsearch is m more modern than the Sphinx search that we used previously, uh, or uh, uh, use currently, as a matter of fact. Um, Elasticsearch is better supported. We have a lot more um, know-how in the community around Elasticsearch. Um, and it's more flexible. It allows us to incorporate extra factors in the ranking of plugins uh, for search results. Um, also, one of the, the, the biggest um, improvements there is that it will be able to finally search translated content in localized plugin directories. Um, tomorrow there's uh, actually a session about uh, Elasticsearch by uh, Taylor Lovett. I would um, encourage you to um, go check it out if you're interested in search in general. Um, yeah, so again, uh, this is how a, a search result page could look like, um, in this case, I just took the e-commerce example. Um, we have you know, the plugin icons that we, that we saw on the home page, pretty much the same, the same layout with a lot more white space. And it's just you know, easier to scan um, than it is currently. On the plugin detail page, we will continue to use um, the banner, of course. Um, this is something that um, we think might work in terms of design and layout, uh, together with a, uh, with a plugin icon that, you know, it's being shown in WP Admin and as well in the index pages or, or archive pages on uh, the plugin directory. Uh, if you scroll that page down, it would look something, or it could look something like this, uh, where you have still the meta information on the right side and um, more content in, in the center, of course. Um, we're still experimenting very much with different ways to um, show the data we have. Uh, one of the things that I personally am really like is the way that um, support uh, and the amount of uh, resolve support requests are being displayed here in the bottom right. Um, I think it's a very power it can be a very powerful um, visual, you know, to see um, this kind of load bar uh, uh, graphic um, to kind of convey the information of how many support requests have been answered um, and give you, you know, a, 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 an idea in a glance of how well that plugin author um, is, you know, after you know, user support and how, how well the plugin author um, deals with user support and uh, makes sure that uh, questions are answered. Besides search, another, another um, opportunity that we see for uh, user, experience, uh, user experience improvements um, are tags, or rather um, converting tags to categories long term. Um, tags have been a free for all. Um, in the current uh, plugin directory where you can um, define tags uh, as you wish and, and, and plugin, plugin authors have taken advantage of that uh, and, and you know, taken use of that. Um, a lot of plugins that 
use not very useful tags like you know WordPress or Post. You know, it's it's just not something that helps users find plugins. Um, and so we would like to uh, refocus our taxonomies uh, to make it easier to find the right plugin. Um, moving to categories and a, and a fixed set of categories. Uh, in the first um, iteration, um, we thought of 26 different categories um, that, uh, for, for plugins. Um, using categories allows us to uh, feature you know, specific categories. You know, for example, on the home page, say, I don't know, the most popular uh, tools plugins or the most popular uh, translation plugins um, or what have you. Categories are also familiar to users, as it is well evidenced by uh, mobile app stores like Google Play and iTunes. Um, and so um, this is an improvement, I think, um, over the existing syst systems of tags, more or less. The next group of stakeholders in the plugin directory are developers, of course. Um, a lot of you here are plugin developers. And we think it could, uh, it could be a good idea to have a dedicated admin interface. Um, we played with a lot of ideas over the last um, three, four months that we've been working on it, um, and have used WP Admin to kind of um, test data that we have and see how we can, we can um, visualize them appropriately. So everything that I'm going to uh, show you now is probably not um, going to stay in WP Admin, but it's uh, a possibility that uh, we used to just experiment a little bit with the data that we have. Um, a contributor suggested to um, use the list of plugins um, to kind of you know, create a dashboard, kind of a health check for your plugins as well. So have uh, you know, the list of your plugins and, and have a quick overview over uh, ratings, uh, downloads, active installs, um, and more importantly, support requests and, and open support requests uh, in, in the forms. So that could be something we could do. On the uh, single plugin page, if you want, uh, we thought it could be a good idea to move a lot of the things that currently are being managed through readme.txt files uh, into an administrative interface. Um, so, you know, being able in, to not have to commit a code change to your plugin to update um, the, com the version of WordPress that your plugin is compatible with, you know, um, not having to commit a change to your plugin to update the categories or tags for your, for your plugin as well. Um, but rather have those in this administration area where you can do, those, do that conveniently uh, through a UI um, and kind of separate that from the functionality of your plugin itself. Um, we could also use that to um, add more stats and have um, yeah, a, a broader variety of stats for your plugin uh, besides just downloads um, or active installs. And since you know, the plugin directory code will be open source, this is also something that where plugin authors can get active themselves and make suggestions and you know, create patches and um, get active themselves to improve new um, parts of, of that experience uh, for plugin, plugin developers. We've been working on the new plugin directory for um, about four or five months now. And I think we're at a, at a stage now where we would like to uh, open it up uh, to the community for more feedback. So I would like to invite everyone, um, everyone here, everyone watching this talk, everyone in the WordPress community, um, to visit wordpress.org slash plugins dash WP uh, and check out the new plugin directory. Um, this is very much still a work in progress. We're not done. We're still iterating. Um, I want to emphasize that. Um, it's open to everyone. Um, every plugin author and committer who um, yeah, has, has commit access to a plugin has also access to the dashboard to, to play around with their plugin's data. Um, at this point, we feel that the data structure is mostly complete um, and we'll focus on iterating on the user interface um, for both the, the user facing and the developer facing sides. Please do join us in uh, the meta channel on the Make WordPress Slack. This is where we also um, have fairly regular meetings. Um, and uh, the plugin directory component is definitely the place for you to go to uh, create tickets, to report bugs, to ask for new features. Um, so on meta.track.org, um, 
you can create new tickets in the plugin directory component, and that's where we, um, yeah, manage these improvements and bugs and and um, this project as we have over you know the last three or four months. My name is Konstantin Obenland. You can find me on Twitter under at Obenland on GitHub, pretty much everywhere on the web. Um, I blog mostly food these days. I'm sorry. Um, on Konstantin.Obenland.it. Every once in a while, there's a nice you know picture of a city or something. I don't really write a whole lot. Um, you can find me after this talk if um, there will be questions that I can't answer or don't have the time to answer. Um, and more importantly, you can also find me on Contributor Day on Sunday. And if you're interested in helping out with the plugin directory there, uh, there will be a bunch of uh, contributors there who can help you uh, get set up with the meta environment um, and get you started on uh, helping us build the next version of the plugin directory. And with this, I take questions.